Well, hello there, AP Hug team. This is Sanchez, and I wanted to create a quick video just to review the practice FRQ that we did in class today, which is looking at selected migration patterns in the late 20th century. Now, this is a great FRQ to practice with because this particular FRQ hits multiple units. Of course, this ties into Unit 3, which is finishing up our discussion on migration. But you can also see that we have the key term distance decay, which was introduced in Unit 1, Nature and Perspectives. And then finally, we also have in this particular FRQ the core periphery model, which was in our industry and development unit. All right, so in part A, students are asked to define each of the principles. So you had to go through and define core periphery, distance decay, and chain migration. Then in part B, you are then, the instructions read that you have to select one of the migration streams for each of the three geographic principles, and then talk about and discuss how the stream illustrated each principle. Each migration stream could only be used once. All right, and let's go ahead and put on the screen the rubric that we looked in class. Um, so you can see part A is worth three points, which is one point for each of the definitions of those three terms. And then for, for part B is worth six points, which is two points um, to list and also discuss specific reasons for each migration pattern. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at student um, in sample 1A. So to check your own work, uh, student sample 1A received a score of 8 total. So for part A, this particular student received two points. They received one point for distance decay and one point for chain migration. There was no point that was given for um, core periphery because here the student only describes the economic situation of rich countries getting richer and poor countries becoming poor. So that doesn't necessarily fully define or explain the core periphery model. In part B, the student received six points. So in the core periphery, the student received one point for the proper identification. In this case, the student picks stream C, and one point for a clear discussion about the type of migrant flowing this stream from the periphery to the core. The student uh, not only discusses the idea of brain drain, which is one of the vocab terms for migration, but also relates the relationship between the core and the periphery. Now, letter C on the map that was provided in the question represents the migration from Africa, the periphery, to Europe, of course, which is one of our core regions. And Europe's economy will now benefit from this skilled worker while Africa is left behind. So the wealth is once again taken away from the periphery and put in the hands of the core. So for distance decay, the student also received both points for the proper identification of stream B. And for the last piece on chain migration, the student received one point for proper identification of stream A. And the second point of mentioning the family and friends follow the original migrates to the same area. So when the student writes, these migrates then move to the same area as their family and their friends to be with familiar faces. So they're definitely linking or tying it to our definition of chain migration. All right, for student sample 1B in this case, if you score the sample essay as a score of six, you would be on point with our AP readers. So similar to what we saw in part A, uh, is for this particular uh, sample is gonna receive two points. Um, they again received the sample or the point for distance decay. They definitely got chain migration. So when people migrate from one region to another after remaining in contact with family or friends that have not moved to the other region. But here again, we see where the student missed the mark with the core periphery. So there's no points earned here because this particular student was going into the discussion of um, more of our urban models because they're mentioning central business districts and they're talking about the hinterland. So in this case, this person cross-referenced some of the vocabulary. So part A only received a score of two points. Now for part B, for the core periphery, the student received only one point for identifying stream C. So in this sample, the student correctly identifies the stream, but only states that one area has more opportunity than the other. So when they say people from the Northern Africa continue to migrate, it goes on countries in Northern Africa and then remain underdeveloped. The response in this case that I think most of the AP readers would say would lack the specific, uh, specifics. 
Just remember, constantly remember when you look at other sample work of how to use it for your own. And you're going to necessarily get that point if you're very specific and especially the characteristics of the migration stream that was chosen in this particular FRQ. Now for distance decay, the student also received one point, uh, but no discussion point was awarded because there was no details given about the stream in this particular case. And then for the last one, the student received one point for uh, chain migration for proper identification. In this case, they chose stream A. And then they did receive one point for clearly linking uh, the groups to the migrants in earlier groups. So the student goes on to say Koreans, Japanese, and Vietnamese chain migration to the west coast of North America after hearing from family or friends, or they continue from there. All right, and last but not least in your packet, you also scored the last sample essay, which is student sample 1C. And for this particular FRQ, this is a score of a three. So in this case, uh, for part A, core periphery, no points were given because the description of core periphery model is incorrect. I would also note in this case that the student missed the mark in terms of identifying marking clearly A, B, and C. Um, so remember, make the AP reader's life easier, more likely to get that point. So I would say they were completely off in core periphery and they didn't mark it correctly A, B, and C. Um, for distance decay, in this case, the student received one point um, because they kind of set up the relationship between distance and interaction. So the more distance that is, you know, between two different areas, the less interactions they are. Okay, so we're on the right track there. And the last part is, again, chain migration. The student clearly links the idea uh, talking about there. So we did get one point there. So two points were allotted for part A. Now, for part B in this case, uh, core periphery, the student received one point um, in this part of the response. Now, although the stream is not identified by letter, the description indicates the migration is evident in stream B and identifies the peripheral Mexico to the core of the United States. Again, make your life easier, make the AP reader's life easier, and make sure you're clearly identifying the stream. I think that's just a better bet in terms of having a, a stronger score. The idea of gaining economic benefit by moving to the core is also evident. So when the student writes, the people from the periphery migrate to the core to use and gain economic benefits. For example, uh, can include Mexicans coming from the U.S. Um, for distance decay, there was no point given because it's kind of vague. It doesn't really go into specifics for stream F. And then for chain migration, the student also didn't receive any point because there's no information given directly that links the stream to chain migration. So again, going one time through, if you uh, scored these FRQs, sample one would be a score of A, sample two would be a score of six, and sample three would be a score of three. Now, of course, my advice would be to look over the rubric yet again, look at your in-class sample that we wrote together as a team, score yourself and think of again the areas that necessarily you missed the mark or do you need to go back and review do you need to be more specific do you need to make sure you identify are you having a thorough discussion are you using concrete evidence in terms of your vocabulary words you know always again where can we reflect and where can we improve so take this as a learning tool and just a reminder of course our frq is scheduled for friday so i will see you in class have a wonderful evening.